Hey everyone, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2021 Ford Bronco Sport, we're gonna be showing you how to install the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver. Before we do that though, let's take a minute, check this out and make sure it's gonna be the right hitch for you. So for those of you uh, without a factory tow package, this is gonna be a great solution and allow you to pull trailers around, uh, use accessories or even a little bit of both. There are a couple other hitches available for the Bronco Sport and just to compare them to the e-trailer one, to be honest with you, uh, they're all going to be very similar. Uh, really the main difference is going to be the appearance. But for the most part, they're all going to sit in the same spot and be pretty much hidden. You'll just be able to see the receiver tube opening, but the finish is kind of what separates them. So there's a Kurt hitch, that's a high gloss finish, if that's what you're looking for. The e-trailer one, I'm personally a fan of. I think it looks the most factory. It's more of a matte black and kind of matches the uh, bumper a little bit better, at least in my opinion. And then the draw tight's kind of in the middle, more of a semi-gloss uh, type finish. But the installation is a little bit different. Uh, the Curtin e-trailer are gonna be the same. The draw tight, you actually have to remove the, the whole rear fascia here. Um, so it's definitely a little more involved. And, and honestly, you kind of get the same result. You get the same look. A lot of times when you have to remove the fascia, um, you know, it looks a little bit better, a little more hidden. That's just not the case. Uh, so if that's something that's important to you, uh, the e-trailer and curb one will be a little bit easier to get up in place. This hitch is going to have a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, which is a good thing because that's a really common size and a lot of different things will work with it. It is going to use the standard 5 8 pin and clip. One doesn't come with the hitch. If you need one, not a big deal. You can always grab it here at e-trailer. Even if you leave your accessory in all the time, might not be a bad idea to look into a locking style hitch pin. And if you plan on buying a, a bike rack or something like that in the future, a lot of times they'll come with one. So just something to look out for there. The safety chain openings are a loop style uh, and provide us with enough space to use pretty much any size hook that our trailer might have on it. As far as it just weight capacities go, it's going to have some pretty good numbers. Maximum gross tongue weight rating is going to be 525 pounds. That's going to be the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch. That's more than enough for just about any size uh, bike rack or cargo carrier. I'll give you an example there. And for the maximum gross trailer weight rating, that's going to be 3,500 pounds or the amount of weight pulling on the hitch. That is the weight of the trailer plus anything you might have in or on it. Now, I do always like to recommend, it's always a good idea just to grab your Ford's owner's manual. That way you can check in there and make sure that your Bronco Sport can handle that much weight safely. We'll grab a couple measurements now and these will help us figure out what type of accessories work best. We go from the ground to the top and side edge of the receiver tube opening, taking into account the lift that we're parked on. That's going to be about 16 inches. So if you plan on pulling a trailer, you can probably use a ball mount that has a straight shank or maybe even one with a slight rise, inch or two, probably work for most people. You go from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper. That's going to be about four inches, which is pretty good. So you shouldn't uh, run into too many issues here, but if need be, you can use that to help figure out exactly if any of those folding style accessories you might have can be stored upright without hitting the back of your uh, Bronco Sport. Ultimately, at the end of the day, hitch you really can't go wrong with. Uh, you know, if it were me, this would be the one I would use. I just like the way it looks, but it's really just going to depend on what appearance you're going for. And uh, hopefully we have a hitch available that uh, can match that. As far as the installation goes, it's really not too bad. You do lower the exhaust down some. Isn't a huge deal. Um, you know, put the hardware in the frame and you will have to trim a small portion here just so the hitch will clear and not hit your uh, plastic fascia here. Uh, but really shouldn't run into too many issues or take up a bunch of your time. But if you're going to be doing this yourself, feel free to hang around. Go ahead and get started on it now. To begin our installation, we're going to be here at the back of our Bronco. And along this bottom edge, we're going to have a total of four screws that we need to remove. Here's what those screws look like. And you can use a seven millimeter head socket pull them all out. We're going to need to lower our exhaust some to give us some more room to work. 
Prior to doing that, I like to take a strap, just run it from side to side to help support the exhaust and help control how fast and how far uh, we let it come down. If you follow your exhaust towards the front of the vehicle, about in the middle of it, you're gonna have a rubber isolator hanger and you can spray it down with soapy water, help lubricate it. And I like to just kind of work it back and forth um, to kind of get things loosened up. And you can take a pry bar or a big screwdriver and work one end of that hanger off. If you move to the back of your vehicle, kind of by your tailpipe, you're gonna have another hanger on each side. And just over here on the passenger side, we have this wiring harness attached to it. So we'll take a 10 millimeter socket, remove that nut, and kind of pull this harness off and out of the way. And from this point on, whatever we do to one side of our vehicle, we're also gonna to do to the other side because it'll be set up the same. But then you're gonna have another 10 millimeter. That's what's actually holding the exhaust system up. And I already have the one on the other side removed. So I should be able to loosen up our strap and let the exhaust come down a little ways. Our vehicle has these liners that come up and connect to the bottom of our frame rail. And they're blocking one of our attachment points. So we're gonna get it out of the way. You can take a trim tool or flathead screwdriver and work. One of those fasteners out. With this one, you just pry down on the head of it. And you kind of get underneath it and work it out. And I'm just going to kind of push this off to the side like that. On the bottom of each frame rail, we're going to have a total of three attachment points. So we'll be using this one this one and this one. And then this hole here on the inside of our frame rail, we're gonna use that as an access hole to get the hardware through there. Uh, one of the things I noticed, whenever you try to take the bolt and get the head of it through there, it fits for sure, but it's pretty tight. And so it's kind of a pain to, to get the hardware in there. So what I'm gonna do, which like I said, you can get the hardware in there without doing this, but, um, this definitely makes it easier. I'm just gonna take a bit and enlarge this hole a little bit. You don't have to remove a bunch of material, so you could even get away with using a hand file to do this as well. You can take your fish wires and take the coiled end of it. We'll start with this hole here close to the back of the vehicle and push a coiled end out through there. You'll take one of these spacer blocks, put it over the end of the wire, one of the carriage bolts, we'll thread that on, and feed the hardware up into the frame one at a time. Pull it down until it drops through. I'm gonna use that same technique and hardware combination for these other attachment points here. Since we did enlarge uh, this hole and expose some bare metal, I'm gonna come back with some paint and put a layer over it just to help keep it protected from rust and corrosion issues down the road. Trim a small opening here on our rear fascia. That way the hitch you know, can go up into place without interference. There's a diagram instructions you can reference. But more or less, these little uh, bumps here on the fascia just gonna follow that hard edge 
all the way around. I'm gonna use a multi-tool to cut this out. You can use a Dremel tool, pair of snips, uh, whatever you got. I'll go ahead and get this done here. If you can have someone give you a hand with this part, it'll make it a lot easier. You can take your hitch and put the fish wires through the corresponding holes in the hitch. And once we get them started on both sides, we'll raise it up a little ways. And then we'll have to kind of pull back on our fascia kind of work the hitch into position like that. It looks like it's almost going to have to go between our fascia and behind the heat shield. So maybe I'll just bend that out of our way a little bit. Once you uh, have this in position, you can remove one of the pull wires, take a flange nut, and get at least one started on each side hand tight. That way the hitch will support itself. You're having a hard time getting it going because the bolt wants to push up. You can always just apply a little side pressure to it. That'll keep it steady and make it easier to get the nut started. Once you get all the hardware started, hand tight and come back with a three quarter inch socket and snug it all down. Need to make sure and come back with a torque wrench now and tighten down all the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. As far as this underbody panel goes, you know, the hitch is blocking where it used to be attached. Really nowhere great to go with it. Uh, what I did was just slid it over the bolts you know, just to have a little something there. And then I just took a zip tie and secured it. There's some factory wiring back here that you can connect it to and that'll help keep everything held in place rehang our exhaust the opposite way that we lowered it and once it's supporting itself again we can get rid of our strap here last but not least make sure you come back and take those screws get all those reinstalled once you have that done you're in good shape and with that said that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the trailer.com trailer receiver on our 2021 Ford Bronco Sport.